Here's a garden update for August 16, 2013. I'm over here in my wife's garden. Uh, first thing you notice is the African blue basil here. The more I cut it back and give cuttings to my friends, the more it grows. The honeybees absolutely love this. And out of all the plants that we planted for bee attraction, this is the one that they are always on all day long, and the majority of them. It produces these flowers here, and has a great fragrance. Now, as you can see, I've got this in my off-grid self-watering container garden bucket. And I do give it the Midlighter weekly feed about two teaspoons about every three weeks or so. And is doing fantastically well. It does draw the honeybees to the garden. Here, as an ornamental display and also as food, she has planted Malamar spinach. And what we've done is we've taken a couple cattle panels put them together with with wire ties it creates a shade uh, you can also eat these leaves the smaller ones taste better but this will be beautiful when these flowers open up and uh, on this side she's got the malamar spinach growing and on the other side her plans are to grow green bean vines here you can see we have an empty bed this here and across the back and over here this is her strawberry bed and hasn't been able to plant because it's been raining and the soil is really really soggy so she can't really turn it. On the other hand with the sand and sawdust even though we've had a lot of rain I had no problem at all turning that with the mantis tiller and getting my 50 strawberry plants into the ground. So one advantage of the custom soil mix with the inexpensive sand and sawdust is that it is workable when maybe other traditional soils aren't. You can see that's very, very heavy, wet, and uh, I don't know when she'll be able to plant her strawberries. This is our first year trying corn. She doesn't have any experience with it. I recommended that she cut off the suckers down here in the bottom. I, again, that's just a recommendation from others that I've seen who've planted corn. If you have a recommendation whether we should remove those or not, please comment below. But I do understand that those suckers like tomato suckers will draw the nutrition and strength from the plant and will produce an inferior crop. She has decided to remove all six of these beds and put in one 30 foot, four foot wide mid ladder garden. We'll use the same soil but the management of the garden will be much easier and the access will be much easier. We'll be able to have a nice aisle on both sides of it We'll be able to put down two long watering pipes instead of using this drip irrigation, which she knows doesn't work for watering in the weekly feed, which is causing her more work because of the drip irrigation. So she's looking forward to having that happen. We'll probably do that this fall when it's not so hot. Here, this particular bed is going to stay, and we have started converting it to a mid ladder garden. You can see we've removed the lip that was on the, this bed to give us a little bit more aisle space here. And I've added the T-frames. She planted some cantaloupe bushes in the back. And as you can see, they've grown very, very well, just amazingly well. And they have a lot of fruit on here. And this fruit is setting. And as you can see, the honeybees are over here working the fruit, the blossoms, and they really enjoy the plants over here. But we're looking forward to having several cantaloupes from this bed right here. Now you notice I have some galvanized electrical conduit here that we had used to set up some vertical growing over here. In reality, this cost more to set this up than it did cost to build the mint lighted T-frames. And as you can tell, the T-frames are much more sturdy and can support four lines of plants growing vertically where each of these only can support one line. So again the mid gardening method has shown that it does a great job in cutting costs and improving productivity. We are putting in our fall garden and so my wife has planted several bush beans here. She has her traditional expensive organic soil and uh, she's used vermiculite here to increase the germination of the seeds because the soil does get compact and it's harder for the seeds to come out. I have found that my germination rate is almost 
It's actually the same or higher than hers in the sand and sawdust because it is so light and easy for the plants to get up. We have great germination. So these are growing great. We're happy with the results of here. Now one thing we have noticed is that it's here when it's we're in the high 90s and hundreds it's very important when we plant seeds outside and have new seedlings to cover them from the sun. So here she's used some one one and a half ounce agribond fabric to protect it from the sun and some window screen here on the ends. I'll show you what I've done in my beds. As you can see we have some bird netting here this is actually really good bird netting. We're doing a test right now, so I'll have a better review later. Do not get this confused with the cheap stuff you buy at Home Depot or Lowe's. This is not that. This is much better netting. We've been happy with it so far. Just need to do a little more testing before I give you my opinion whether it's worth buying or not. So far, two thumbs up on it. The reason why we have the netting up here is because once I've netted my garden, the birds came over here and just were devastating herd pepper crop. So now that we have the netting up, even though it's not completely installed, we have had no birds getting into her peppers again. Because we've had such a bird problem here, I have everything covered in my garden other than the sweet potatoes. And the sweet potatoes have been growing fantastically well. I'm very excited about them. Uh, I have had a bug problem. So yesterday I sprayed with some soapy water which took care of the bugs immediately but uh, there's a lot of bug damage on here it hasn't been to the point that I've been concerned about it but uh, now it has been and I should have taken care of this a long time ago when I see leaves like this that indicates to me that I have a bug problem and then I turn it upside down and certainly you can see all of the tiny eggs or bugs down here these are all dead now fortunately they really have been sucking the life out of these plants. So I have a video on my new and improved soapy water insecticide that works instantly on these bugs and has not been damaging the plants at all. But what's exciting is I have potatoes growing all over inside of here. And I planted the potatoes right down here on the edge. And here's, in fact, here's a potato right here. Because it's not covered with dirt, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just reach, come in here and reach for some dirt I happen to grab potatoes and that's why how I found out that there's potatoes growing all the way through this bed it'll be interesting to see when I harvest here in another month or two really how many potatoes I'm getting this is a 50% sunscreen that I got from AmericanNettings.com I have a video on the sunscreen been very happy with it for two reasons first of all it's helped keep the rodents out as you can see I have the dirt kind of piled up on the sides and on the ends to keep the rodents out it keeps the sun off the plants and these are new seeds I put in here we have, happen to have carrots and lettuce in here and I can hand water through it if I need to so that's worked out very well I've been very happy with the sunscreen and the netting I've gotten from AmericanNettings.com they do have an affiliate program I'm not an affiliate for them but I've been very very happy with the personnel and the products there we have had 100% success with the bird netting we put up here. This, this is the knitted bird netting. It's very soft. It doesn't, it's not as grabby as other nettings, and it's easy to work with. These are my tomatoes that I planted in spring, and as you can see, they're still doing very well. I feed them with the weekly feed and watch them for deficiencies. But now that I've changed from the 13, 13, 13 to the 16, 16, 16, uh, I notice that I can feed every seven days instead of every five days. As you can see, the plants are all kind of wrapped around down there. It's because they're so tall, uh, in order to keep them manageable, I've had to lower them down. And over here, it's just gone crazy. So I've decided next year that in June, when the tomatoes are done with the initial harvest, I'll take them out and I'll plant new tomato plants inside and then bring them outside for a fall harvest. All of these tomatoes here are cuttings from the other tomatoes on the other side. So these are actually tomato clones. Uh, they've all done pretty well. I've lost a couple because I removed the sunscreen. This particular bed doesn't have sunscreen over it. So I need to get that on here for next year. They all are healthy. They're growing well. They don't get as much light in my garden as my wife does, but I'm very happy with their growth. We had a very high success rate with 
the cuttings. Actually, we had 100% success rate until I removed the sunscreen and then they got burned up. This is a 70% sunscreen that we have over here on this bed. And as you can see, it was six feet wide. We needed it to be longer, so my wife sewed it here on her serger. And we made it longer. It wasn't quite long enough. So what I did is I took some of these clips and clipped them on here. Now these clips are really from this retention system here. I'll have a link. But it's 3 quarter inch, 200 PSI PVC. And, the, and this is half inch schedule 40 PVC, which is what I've made the A-frames out of. And so I just cut pieces of this and use that to clamp on. It's not the best solution, it does hold very, very securely, but that does leave this end open, which is not good because I wanted to have that closed to keep the rodents out. We've had a rodent problem. Along the edge here, I've got the soil heaped up over the sides to keep that down on the sides. What I prefer is using one by twos. This is the second planting of my spring garden. About four weeks ago, I planted everything. Everything came up in about three days. Fantastically healthy, fast. It was exciting because it had a 10 to 14 day germination period. And then I came back about four to five days later and some rodents had come through and eaten every single plant. So I replanted, I put the A-frames over that, and then I took the fabric here and with the one by twos on the ends that I have over in my strawberry bed, I put that on top of here and with the bird netting and that, it kept the rodents out. The plants are doing great, except for this fabric doesn't allow airflow and I had the ends closed to keep the rodents out. And so it got really humid inside of here, which encouraged spider mites to grow. So I noticed the spider mites on the leaves. Again, the leaves kind of drying out, flipped it over, saw all the black spots. You can't really see spider mites themselves. And I sprayed it with my new solution of soapy water and it took care of the spider mites without damaging the plants. The plants look great and are growing very well. One thing I found is that I keep forgetting what I planted. And so now on the sticks I write exactly what I plant. As you can see, this is a Waltham butternut squash. I planted it on 726. It's supposed to germinate in seven and 10 days. And the harvest date is October 25th. And I just staple that to the two by eight. And then I know exactly what I planted, when it's supposed to germinate and when I'm supposed to harvest. So here I have butternut squash, acorn squash, yellow summer quickneck squash, straight eight cucumbers, Hale's best cantaloupe, and a row of Kentucky Wonder green beans. All of these will be growing vertically, and so I'll be able to get a good yield out of this square footage here. The bell peppers are doing great. I did originally use the boxing twine or packaging twine from Home Depot to tie them up. Even though this is polished wine, it does deteriorate and the branches have been breaking off under the weight of the fruit and the twine breaking. So I've lost several branches here, but the plants are healthy and very productive. As you can see, we've got some beautiful fruit growing here. Here's another bed. You can see it's covered with a 50% shade cloth. And inside of here, I have cabbage. I have a couple different kinds of zucchini. You can see the zucchini plants growing in here. Again, we're shading them from this high 90, low 100 degree weather until they get a little bit stronger. I've got some cantaloupe in here. Again, we love cantaloupe. And I've got a pumpkin in here. The honeybees are doing great. So far, we've harvested 238 pounds of honey from these hives this year. I've had to replace a couple queens in here. This queen was three years old and she just finally gave out. And so I put a new queen in there last week and checked and she is laying eggs and doing well. The avocado tree is producing great looking avocados. We're very happy with that. It's been a good producer for us over the years. It's only about a four year old tree that is quite healthy. The nectarine tree is growing crazy. The birds ate all the nectarines off of it. So we didn't get any nectarines. Here's a tangerine tree here. This is its first year and it's doing quite well. Using the Midlighter weekly feed on these about three or four times a year. The three-in-one apple tree has finished producing. 
and so I have the blueberries in the back. The birds get all the figs off the fig tree. The pomegranate tree is loaded with pomegranates. As you can see, we've got lots of pomegranates growing on here and even new blossoms coming out. There's several different, there's a couple different ways you can grow a pomegranate tree. I'm trying to grow a, a tree versus a bush, and so I've kept it to one stock, so I'm constantly having to cut back on the plants coming out from the base of the tree. But we got pomegranates all over this tree, looking forward to a great harvest this year. Last fall, before I got my greenhouse plastic again, I was concerned about the damage being done to the plants by the wind and so I set up this kind of makeshift wind block using some plastic from Home Depot. As you can see it didn't even last a year. It lasted you know about nine ten months is all and uh, it's completely deteriorated from the UV light. So I do recommend using greenhouse plastic. I'll have a link where I bought mine. I thought it was a very very good price and uh, enjoyed working with the people there. They're very considerate. Here is my sequoia strawberry bed and as you can see I've got the sunscreen over them. I bought them as bare root plants and planted them as soon as I got them and they've done really well. They've been in for less than a week. As you can see this time I'm leaving plenty of ventilation for this but protecting it from the sun. I've got the ends open and the sides open here so it can get air through there. When I received the bare root plants, they looked just like that. Of course, with the roots that are planted underneath the ground. And the instructions said, do not fertilize until spring. Well, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted these plants to grow, so I planted them in the garden here. And yeah, as you can see, they are growing great. I planted these five days ago. And using the sand and sawdust mixture I have in here and the weekly feed and the pre-plant fertilizer everything is growing very very well I'm very happy with the results so far so this will give these plants an opportunity to establish a great root system and I hope we hope to have our first sequoia strawberries in about April next year if you're looking to maximize the nutrition and financial return on your investment strawberries are not the best thing to plant but we spend so much money on strawberries to me it made sense to buy strawberries now I bought these from I think it's called farmers seed I'll have a link down below very inexpensive and they were shipping in August sooner than anybody else so I wanted to get these in the ground as soon as possible I've got these planted eight inches apart which is probably twice as close as you normally plant them but the purpose is to get a, a crop the first season instead of waiting for the second season. But they are doing fantastically well. I'll keep them shaded during the summer and look forward to a good production in spring of next year. I apologize for the length of this video. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention is I've been testing this sunscreen up here. This is again 50% sunscreen on top I'll have a video on this and this has done really well it has really helped out these new seedlings down here in the bottom of the bed to uh, make it through these hot summer days here if you aren't doing something to manage the temperatures in you, on your plants in your gardens and you get hot weather like we do here in Houston you're not going to get great results like others are who are managing the temperature of their plants so sunscreen during a hot summer is vital in, in maintaining the temperature of the garden. As you can see, I have wireless thermometers in my garden so I can monitor the temperatures and know how to act appropriately. I apologize for the length of the video. A lot going on, a lot of changes in the garden, but I'm very happy with the results it keeps producing and we keep harvesting. Last night again we had potato salad and watermelon all from the garden. The onions, the potatoes, the watermelon, it was wonderful. This is LDS Prepper reminding you, if ye are prepared, ye shall not fear. And check the links below for additional information on how to build the A-frames, where to get the fabric, the netting, and the strawberries. Today is the weekly feed scheduled day, so I thought I'd show you what the garden looks like without the screens on them. This is my lettuce. Came up in just three days. 
Over here we have carrots. This will take 21 days for these carrots to germinate. It took about eight days for them to germinate. So they came up very well in the sand and sawdust. Here are the bush green beans that my wife planted in my garden over here. And they're doing well, although I can see that we've got insect problems. So I will spray that with the soapy water. In fact, you can see a bug right there on the plant. Soapy water will kill that bug here in just seconds. But you can see they really do devastate a garden here very quickly. But the plants all grew well, but I need to take care of them because of the bugs. This is my 13 foot bed, and this is where I have the cabbage. You can see the cabbage is here. I must have dropped a seed and it, and it germinated. But there's the cabbages. Here is the zucchini. And I'll be growing all this out here horizontally on the ground. I've got the space all out here to do that. Here I've got the pumpkin and I've got my cantaloupe plants here.